Let's talk about common symbols used in set theory for your foldable. The first thing I'm going to have you put is your set notation. It looks like this. This is a symbol that we use to describe a set, which is a collection of elements. The next symbol I want you to write is the universal set. A universal set is a set that contains all of the elements of the content that we're interested in. For example, if I said your universal set was all digits from 0 to 9, then maybe a subset or a set could be just odd numbers. But my universal set would literally be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. I could have smaller sets underneath of it, but my universal set encompasses all of the elements in the set. When we use universal set, we have a somewhat notation for that in that we draw it as a big rectangle. So I might have my Venn diagrams inside of it, but this area represents the universal set. Third, let's talk about the complement. You're going to see a couple of different ways that you can do the notation for a complement. For instance, if I was going to say the complement of A, I could write it with a little C raised here, kind of almost to like the power of C. It's not really that, but it looks like that. Or I could put this little dash. Either of these mean the complement of A. What would the complement be? Literally, we're saying everything except for A. That's what we're interested in. So again, if I were to draw a picture with a Venn diagram, and I'm going to shade the complement. I'm literally going to shade everything except for A. It would look like this. That would be the complement of A. The last two are going to be union and intersection. And I'm going to go ahead and break those down in just a minute. Let's talk about the difference between and and or in set theory. Now you might be thinking, this seems really confusing. And it is kind of confusing at first until you really dissect it. So let's just dive right in. Let's first talk about or, since this one seems to be the trickiest for me. I think or is tricky because in real life, we use or in, a, in an exclusive setting. Here's what I mean by that. You go to your favorite restaurant and you order salad. And what does the server say? They say, do you want ranch or blue cheese? You don't say yes. To that question. They're really asking you to choose. Or for instance, if you see a woman who's expecting, you might say, are you having a boy or a girl? Again, you're asking them to pick one or the other. It, it's an exclusive meaning. In mathematics, here's where it gets tricky. Or is an inclusive statement. So if I was going to say, are you having a boy or a girl? I would say, yes, in mathematics, I am having a boy or a girl. It's an inclusive statement. Let me show you what that looks like on a Venn diagram. When I use the word or in mathematics, I'm going to have a Venn diagram that looks like this. And I could say A or B. And I'm literally talking about it can be either A or B in an inclusive setting. So when I shade it, it's going to look like this. I'm literally shading all of it because it's an inclusive setting. In set notation, it looks like this. We read this as A union B. Again, this has to do with my or statement. I would highly recommend that if you have set notation that you put your little or there, and maybe even remind yourself that it's the inclusive definition, not what we use in society. Now let's take a look at and. When I'm looking at and, and I say A and B, I'm actually just talking about the overlap that happens or the intersection. So I would shade this area. I would write this in set notation with an intersection symbol. And and or can be a little confusing because in society, we tend to switch them around a little bit differently than we do in mathematics and in set notation. So hopefully that gives you a little better idea of how to tell the difference between and and or and thinking about or in terms of an inclusive setting in mathematics versus an exclusive setting in society. I hope you found this video helpful.